So he managed to establish some sort of farm. He got some sheep going that's getting us some wool that we're using to make some cloth. The problem is, we don't really make enough income on the day to day that keeps us out of doing contracts. We're constantly doing contracts trying to get the money to come in. I need to be more reliable on my own farm. We got some chickens producing eggs, we got some bees producing honey, we have no grain silo and I really need one. At the moment, I need to keep on crashing out contracts to get the money, so that is what we are going to do. And you know me, I love bailing contracts because they offer so, so much. So I jumped on a lot of bailing contracts, I got some helpers and I went to work. Drop a like on this video or feel free to subscribe, it will encourage me to continue with this farm. Of course, it wasn't just bailing contracts. We had to do many, many others to try and bring some income in. Basically, what I did was just park my own farm because it's winter. There's not a lot going on. And I just hit the contracts and I just hit them hard. And I tried to get as many done as I could so that we could get as much money coming in. Off of the big field bailing contract, we got a few bales left over. So that's helped us out a little bit. That's for sure. I won't be needing much food for the sheep. Got loads. Unfortunately, due to the constant severe lack of money, so much time is spent at the minute doing contracts, just trying to get me in the right position. Every time I buy a new piece of equipment or a building or something, my funds are low again and I have to jump on more contracts just to try and get us up to a level that's sustainable. So after a few days and a bit of a long slog, I have managed to get a silo. And at the minute, it's just currently topped up with the overflow of the chicken feed. Over in the shop, we have a cheap trailer that is 13,000, but it's so much more capacity. But I'm going to sell that, pick this one up from the shop. I've got to look at where we're going to take things next. Ideally, I want to go into the production side of things because production is where the money is. But we need to do more contracts again to keep money coming in. As we're starting to produce more and more goods, I'm getting to the point where I needed the flatbed. So that is why I bought this. It's just a little thing that's cost me next to nothing, but it's going to help me moving those things around that I'm producing that I need to sell. But we're getting close to March, and March is high time for fabric sales. So we'll load these up and get these done. And I'll probably take the honey as well. So we should be looking good. Now that we are fully loaded with the honey and the fabric, or at least all that we've produced so far, we're going to go sell it. So the fabric is going good at uh, this place, I think it was. Bringing in some money, looking good. Okay, so it's only 14k. It's okay, it's better than some contracts to be fair. But the honey at the cereals factory goes for a nice little three grand. Really? So if we look at one of these wind generators, yes, it's about 11,000, but it's going to produce me almost 1,000 every month, whereas the honey was three grand for six months work. So it's kind of a little bit beneficial to get hold of one of these things. So if I can squeeze it down here, get it right in the middle there, that's one. Do you know what? We can almost get one in here. Boom, two, that's about a grand, nice. That honey is just not beneficial as a product on its own. I've just had an idea, knowing that wood is potentially a nice way to go. I've got this empty field currently sat here. I'm gonna plant it with some trees. I don't really know how trees work, other than you get a chainsaw and cut them down. I don't know if you can plant them in a field, but this is our box of toys, if you like. We have the planter and we've got our saplings, so hopefully they'll all fit. As simple as that. And it gives us 20 trees. 20 trees should be enough for where it is. Now, I know that they take a little while to grow. I don't know how long they take to grow. But it's going to buy me a little bit of time anyway to be able to afford the production for the wood. And at the same time, I'm able to carry on doing those good old contracts and just work my own farm as I see fit. Now, it doesn't really matter, I guess, if I start early, does it? But if we can follow the shape of the field, that'd be nice. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, so it's going to do its own thing in its own time. We might not get too many trees across here. So we've got five trees in. That's not too bad. I should be able to get all 20 in here. Sneak one in just before we finish. Get it here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. So that is 20 trees in and ready, I guess. We will revisit those at a later date. <laughs> Busy with contracts is good, but it leaves our farm a little bit empty and neglected. But we're able to get onto it now, now that ours is actually ready to be harvested. So we're going to get the barley, I think it was, in and get the straw bales all wrapped up. Feed the chickens and store the excess. Just go make sure the chickens are all good for feed. And then we can dump this into our silos. Top up the chickens. They shouldn't need much. Or maybe they will. They'll take the whole lot. Okay, cool. 
now that we've got all the barley harvest, here's my train of thought, right? We've got all this straw, but I don't have any use for it. So what I have been doing at the minute is baling up the straw and kind of storing it just in case there's a rainy day. At the moment, there's literally no point in holding the straw. It offers no benefit. So what I was thinking, because this will work for grass as well, we will sell the baler. So now I need to get a trailer that will be able to gather up all the straw off the ground. So we're going to get a forage wagon. This will let us scoop up all the straw and all the grass that we've just chopped down. And it'll make it a lot easier to sell rather than just trying to bale it and just store the bales. At the same time, we're going to grab this dryer. And what this does is going to dry the grass into hay so we don't have to worry about tedding it. And now I guess I see how quickly we fill this trailer up. Oh, by the way, our trees. Look. We've got growth in the trees over there, so that's pretty good. They're about five meters, if we just have a look. But they're doing all right. They're doing all right. This is another oak. This comes when you start, and this is 17 meters. So that's kind of giving me an idea of where we are versus where we could be. If we can gather up all of the straw. We can run this off to sell it. I did do a little calculation. My, all my beehives are about 12,000 total cost. And because honey takes so long to produce, and the last time we sold it, we only made 3,000. I don't know if it's worth it. That 12 grand, I might be able to free it up so that I can use it elsewhere. We'll see how it goes for that at the minute. I'm still currently using the bees to produce the honey. It's good for a little early money. But where we are now, when we're trying to go on to bigger things, the amount that it does produce is tiny in comparison to a lot of other stuff so we might look at binning it off completely i thought while we got the trailer it makes sense to cut the grass and get it into the dryer just to get that process going so at least that we will have some hay so we are sitting in a situation now where our eggs is full but so is our chickens so hopefully what i can do is sell a few chickens because they are going to breed so that's going to help us out a little bit so what i'm feeling next is a telehandler in all fairness so we had a little bit of money and what we were able to do was swap out the forge wagon because there was one on sale which is really good and then we picked this up as well got that long reach and it should help get into all those eggs not going to have too much of a problem with all the bales and stuff so should be laughing with this really but this is what i like about telehandlers because it is it's just so good at getting into those really tight spots helped me with these eggs so so much more than the front end loader would have done able to scoop them up nice and easy no faff no stress get them over to the trailer boom, and away we go so much better that's why we bought it 8400 eggs 2000 honey 4000 fabric luckily for us the best price for half the stuff is right here that's better that is a lot better so honey was about 2000 eggs or a lot lot more if we can get nice money for this i will look at going into uh, some sort of wood production next Hey, okay, that takes us over 60k. The load point is underneath, and then there is a lot, a lot of pickup points. I think that's out of the way enough. We can get access to everything around, we can get all around, so we'll do that. And then, I guess we've got to get a chainsaw and a winch, which will be really interesting. I'm going to leave all this stuff first, I'm going to start with all this out here, so we can have a look see what we get. So we'll grab that, although we don't have enough money, so we'll lease that. We will buy a chainsaw, it doesn't matter which one, they're all the same. Now we have our chainsaw, I'm going to go in and start cutting stuff down, just because they've been here for so long. So we'll cut that, and it won't fall down. So we'll just run this over, and put it in, and away it goes. Okay, beautiful. So we have started our new, our new wood bit, I guess. So I'll keep going through, grab all the little stuff. Although that's already heavy. Okay, cool. I will go and get the winch then, I guess. Let's see if we can understand how this winch works then. So we want to attach this to the tree. Okay, cool. And then we can wind it in. You! Uh, how am I going to do this then? Hopefully I can sneak under here. Hopefully that might be enough. It might be enough. It is enough. Awesome. So this is going to take a while. There, there are probably easier ways to do it. That's for sure. Chop the branches off. Even get the telehandler or something on it. it. Might work better. But, you know, this is what we've got so far. And it works for us. Just think if we can cut them all down. And a few of these we can carry. Which makes it even easier. So I'm going to leave a couple of trees at the gateway here. But I've took out all of my side of the river. Most of the way cleaned up the place nicely a little bit 
the ones that we planted on the field have still got a little bit of growing left to do before they reach the sort of 17 meters they're at nine meters now so hopefully they'll get there soon it is looking so much cleaner just clean the place up a bit we're gonna be laughing and we've got probably 25,000 liters worth of wood out of those trees alone so it's been a good day so i have been nice and busy and i've managed to get rid of all the trees that are on my side all that's left now is all the bushes we lower it we turn it on we just hope for the best really so if i just run this around try and get rid of all of these bushes make the place look a little bit more tidy well needless to say that has been interesting we've pretty much done all that i can do so now we've got rid of the 80s style bush i can look at starting to flatten the land out when they get the funds to do so just to kind of bring it all up a little bit really open up a little bit of space probably look at actually bringing some more trees in speaking of trees how did we get on over here it's still processing 29,000 liters of wood we already have six pallets <laughs> worth of planks and that was just on the trees that were lying in the riverbed that i could get to so it's been a good good little run actually we got another month before we can get the barley in, but the wood is at a good price. A little bit of income. We really need that right now. Okay, let's see how we get on with this then. It's going to be interesting. And that is why I love telehandlers. Now, I'm no telehandler pro, but it's so much smoother. We'll get these sold and we'll see where we're at. i got to move the wool into the spinnery and I should actually check on the bees. I just realized halfway to the carpentry that I don't have any fuel. That would be very bad. Let's swing around and get some fuel. That could have been disastrous for us. There we go. As we were to the carpenter. Hello, moto. So this should hopefully all be able to be sold here my understanding it is that's good total sale of just over eight thousand. i just sold two pallets of honey but it is simply not worth it it's taking too long for honey and actually getting nothing for it so i'm gonna remove all the hives so honey is no longer a thing for us it might be a decision i live to regret later on but i think i'm okay with what we're doing I need to buy another field, right? If I can get that field, I'd like to get this field, number 47. That's right behind us. And it's only 64 grand. That's not too bad. I reckon I can do that. While we were waiting for the wood to process in the sawmill, it made sense to try and get the barley in the field. I've already got loads of seeds kicking around. So all I had to do was get hold of the direct drill. Fairly easy. We had enough money to lease it anyway. Grab the direct drill, put the seeds that we already own in it, and get onto these two fields and get this barley planted. The only problem was I kind of let it slip my brain a bit. I didn't actually plant barley. I planted wheat. It's not really a problem. The chickens can still eat it and it'll still produce straw. So there's no big loss. It did mean that as we're going into the winter, however, I would be hitting contracts and just trying to get some money behind me again. But maybe not before we've cut the grass. Keep forgetting. Do our farm first before worrying about anybody else's. As long as it's all cut, then it can keep growing and growing and growing. Well, that's everything cut. I just got to collect it and drop it off at the storage or the blower or dryer, whatever we call it. I can't even remember now. So I've just been checking the quality of our fields and we could do with a hoe. Just get rid of some of the weeds just to help with the, the yield bonus. And lucky for me, in the shop, we have a hoe that is capable to be pulled by the tractor and it's on sale. How wide is this thing? It's going to be wider than I thought. Oh, nice. Well, this will be easy enough to get a field done, and we own this now, so, you know, simple as that. It's as simple and as nice as that. So how's that looking in terms of yield? Now, the yield bonus has gone up a little bit. It was at like 20-something, so it's now at 30-something, so that's not too bad. Bear in mind, I don't think they've ever been fertilised or limed these fields sawmill is looking pretty fantastic all of our trees have grown they are all 17.1 meters so i think they're at the maximum height pristine field number two it is now february after working pretty much all through the winter on contracts it was nice to get some money behind us what i did notice is my chickens are completely utterly out of food I don't have any feed in the grain silos, so I've really got to get that other field, and I have got to plant some chicken feed in it. I want to have as much as I can so that I don't keep running out. 
I have been selling a lot of the chickens as well. They seem to reproduce really quickly. So they are constantly producing eggs and they're constantly producing each other, which means they're always selling something, which is really, really helpful, actually. It might not be a lot of stuff, but it's still a little bit of something. Done a lot of contracts, looking at my own farm now, I'm just going to get rid of these eggs and this fabric, sell it all off, and potentially look at the sawmill and see how that's doing. But look at all those pallets. I have stocked it. It is currently producing prefab walls that it is selling direct. I'm going to go sell all the product that we do have, and then I'm going to come back. We've got to sort this out because this is loaded. For now, I just want to send this off. Bakery was good for the eggs, so we'll just run that down to the bakery, and then we'll take the fabric to the grocery mart and get her done. There we go. Nice little bit of selling. Interesting. All of the product isn't sold. Are you full of eggs? I'm going to go stop off at the fast food restaurant on the way through then. Hey, there we go. See what we're going to get for all this fabric. Should be a pretty penny. Nearly 24,000. Nice. So I headed out to the sawmill to try and pick up all these pallets and put them on the trailer. And there is a lot. And I mean a lot. Every time I picked up, some more spawned. And this happened quite a few times. And it was just like a little bit crazy. But that's good for us because this is all profit. And if profit keeps spawning, that's more profit. Little problem that we ran into though, as we were stacking these up, I tried to go three high. And when I put that strap down, it went a little bit crazy. It bounced and rocked and threw everything around. And it kind of undid all my nice hard work. I had it all nice and neat and I put this next set of three on top. But when I go to latch it all up, it bounces like crazy. So that's going to be quite annoying. So I'm going to have to take those three off and just deliver it as a, a full double stack. Planks are currently at the low end as well. So that's not going to be loads of money. See what we get for this. That looks kind of cool. I like that. So it should be at least 24,000. <laughs> it's too heavy for the tractor. I wouldn't buy a skidding everywhere. That's crazy. I genuinely did not expect that. Out of my curiosity, I have just dropped into the shop to see what's on sale. And we've got one of these trailers on sale and it's only 10,000. And it's like, I need this right now. This is going to be so beneficial for moving these pallets and stuff. We, we couldn't skip that up. We just couldn't skip it up. So I'm going to go take these back or struggle to take these back so we can offload them, put them back into the trailer and away we go. Now, to my understanding, I think you can get three high in these things. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so from my findings, I, I can't stack four high. No matter what I do, it just seems to get stuck. That is a full wagon of pallets that we had. Even the ones that were in the barn. A full load of 18 pallets. So this is going to be interesting. Let's lock them all down first, shall we? Right. Can we tow it? Just about. It do be struggling, though. But it'll get there. Right. Onwards to the carpenter. What are we guessing then? It should be... Well, now we've got 32,000 litres on board. So it should be a minimum of 32,000. Oh, it's not going to get it in a one -er. Ooh. So, 14,800. Call it 15,000. Not taken anymore. Are you joking? I've sold the maximum. Wow. Never experienced that. Never experienced it twice in one day. We buy the carpenter. Hopefully you should be able to do some of that. And I've got the money to. So we'll buy that. If I sell these direct. Sell the wood chips direct as well. Then I don't have to worry about coming down here with anything to pick it all up. And we've already got a load more pallets coming out as well. So <laughs> we're going to keep that carpenter's busy. I decided I wanted my trailer back. So I came down here with the telehandler. Just to try and hook it out. Beautiful, right, <laughs> just run all of this back up to base. So we're now into April and there's still nothing planted in this field and I don't want to risk it because I'm running out of months to plant any food for the chickens and the only thing that I can plant right now is sorghum. So I'm going to buy this so that we can actually plant the sorghum else otherwise we're, we're going to be in trouble. I'm just going to scooch around the headlands, kind of just do a couple of passes on the top and the bottom. I've got loads of pallets of eggs ready to go and there's also so much wool that needs loading into the spinnery. I want to get that in and done. And then I'll line a helper up and send him off on his merry way. There we go. Hopefully he's going to do a good job. Right. You crack on, son. 
But look at all this wool that we've got around here, ready to be loaded in. And we've only got two bits of fabric. We better load these in and get on with it. Might as well scoop this little bit up as well, stick it all in. Jobs are good in. So that is now fully stocked up. Five and a half thousand litres of wool in there ready to do what it's got to do. Right. To the eggs. Beautiful. Hopefully this will be fine. We'll get this onto the trailer all right. Plunk. Click. Another load of goods. Sort of ready to go. We'll keep adding to these as time goes on, but it'll be fine. Try and keep on top of these things as well. They load up pretty well. They do load up pretty well. Just that there carpenter needs a bigger capacity. Hey, cool whip. Looking good. Looking good. It's time to fell some trees. These are fully grown now. They're not growing anymore. So maybe with that in mind, we could fell the lot. And go plant some more. This thing isn't exactly massively beefy when it comes to moving these trees. It's a bit of a game. Well, it's completely showing me up this time though, hasn't it? See, all we've got to do is just get it into the zone. And once it's like into the zone or there or thereabouts, like that, we can sell it. Oh, and it's gone. Nice. And that's instantly like another 7,000 litres. So that's pretty good. So if we get these other two, about 21,000 litres, that will give us another lorry load worth of pallets. When you compare the output to like what we were getting for honey, stuff like that, this is way better. 21,000 litres, that's going to keep you busy for a while. So because the sawmill is doing so well, what I thought I'd do is probably look at getting most or all of these trees down. That way it will free up the area a bit. It will keep this busy, but at the same time I can plant some new trees to get them growing. So that we should always have kind of wood or trees or something going. So that is exactly what I did. I chopped down a load of trees and I dragged them using the telehandler to the sawmill just to keep that production going, pumping out as many pallets of goodies as we could do so that we could have some sort of income coming in when we needed it. We've managed to get 73,000 litres of wood into the sawmill. Now it will take 75,000 litres, but another tree will put us over and I don't want to waste it. I decided I'm going to sell the fabric because it's a good price and the eggs, if we can. I know we've had a little bit of problems selling the eggs before, but we'll see what we do. I see what we get. I'm aiming to try and get about £26,000 that will allow me to get the planter so that I've got the planter so that I can keep planting loads of trees. Wow, that's nice. Sweet little seven grand. So then the next place should be the bakery, but the bakery might be a bit full. Is there going to be any room left in the bakery or is the bakery full still? I'm guessing the bakery's full. It's taken a little bit. Yeah, it's not giving me a cost, but it has taken a little bit. Yep, 600 squidlies. Do you have room for some extra eggs? That is so, so close. So as you'll notice, we've got hardly any money now. That's because I've gone and invested, is what I will say. Least the planter, a box of seeds, if you want to call it that, cost us so much money, but we did get 240. So it's 240 oaks for 12,000 pounds, which is why we've only got 12,000 left. I'm making a lot of money off the trees that I did plant, and that was only 20. So 240 trees, cha-ching, and I don't have to plant them all at the same time. So when we returned back to the farm, wasted no time in getting these seedlings in the ground. I didn't put like every bit in the ground. I did another like 20, something like that. Just a nice manageable number, because obviously if I'm putting these in the ground, surrounded by these other oaks that are already grown, I'm going to give myself a lot of bother when it comes to getting them out. So I wanted to keep things going, wanted to keep the wood production growing, and that's just what we're doing. I can keep the planter off to the side. I've got 240 seedlings, so we're not going to run out of those in a big hurry. And it's going to keep making us a lot of money. Just got to find somewhere to sell it. I'll worry about the stumps at a later date, I guess. 
I'm trying to pull back on contracts as much as I can. I want to become more sufficient on the farm. And it's kind of working. We're, we're in okay money. I don't really feel at the moment there's anything that I need to buy. So here's the thing. We are making a little bit of money throughout the days, which is good for us. But we have literally just run out of chicken feed. This had very little in it yesterday. And today we are now out. So now I've got to grab some chicken feed. It's going to see us through. We'll get four bags of wheat. It's going to cost me 5,600 quid, but our chickens need food. Don't worry, chickens. I'm a coming. Righty ho. So this should fill this up, hopefully. Ooh, while I'm here, we can sell some as well. Let's see what we got. Nobody's at 25, so we'll not bother. Because they sell for 25 pound. So I'll wait until there's some chickens at 25 pound. With the farm slowly expanding, we'll find ourselves with more jobs more often. This includes constantly moving products around from one place to the next, as well as keeping our workplaces loaded up with materials. At the moment, they're not massive jobs. They're not making us a lot of money, but over the course of time, as things develop and as we grow and as we expand, they're gonna be the things that are gonna finance the bigger, better options as we continue to grow what was a tiny little farm just getting established into something that should become something big and great. At least that's the plan anyway. Good morning, good morning. Ooh, we've got wheat ready to go. So we've got to get ourselves a harvester and get this stuff in. Both fields are ready to go. That is fantastic. Well, we might as well get ourselves ready to get some straw as well. Being as we've got the forage wagon, we can just sell it. It'll all be good. It's an extra little bit of income. It doesn't sell for anything, really. It's just not a lot. But, you know, every hole's a goal when it comes to making money. You know what, right? Have you ever sat and thought about how a combine harvester works? It blows my mind how somebody invented a machine that can cut down a crop, beat it to smithereens to get the tiny, tiny, tiny little bit that it needs out of it and get rid of most of the waste and keep that tiny little thing that it needs. And it holds that all in one machine and it just runs it through. Genuinely, machinery, especially on farms, blows my mind. But thankfully, that is one field completed. We're at that kind of sustainable stage now. So we've got the farm built up and now it's just a case of getting it sustainable so it can basically keep itself alive without me needing to do contracts. And then once we're sustainable, we look at growth. A three-step plan. Build the foundations, become sustainable, grow. That's what we've got to do. And there we have it. That is both fields fully harvested it's not an awful lot you know and the chickens have already eaten through about 2,000 worth of the feed that we got that holds 9,000 liters oh wow I I need to get some rollers and some limes and whatever going on these fields so that I can get a higher yield so here we have a lime trailer. So I'm guessing we're going to have to go pick up some lime and run this across the fields. Now I'm going to do three fields. I don't know how much lime that means I'll need. I'm not going to lie. Let's go. Uh, it's only small fields there. Let's go 30%. Yeah, there we go. So hopefully that's enough. Trial and error. <laughs> so I'm thinking that if I start on the bigger one, kind of give me a bit more of an idea, hopefully. Okay, so it's quite wide. Oh, not as wide as I thought it was though. Oh dear. So that wasn't enough. I did have to do a couple of passes to get some bits that I've missed, but yeah, it wasn't wasn't enough at all. We'll go top up and come back again. Okay, I might have gone overkill this time because I got 60 litres or 60% even. Now I know it's it's not gonna be that much because this is the biggest field, I think. But I've also got the little one to do at the front, and then I'm gonna have that one to do as well. I just kind of thought 60 might cover it. So now that the fields are limed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at rolling them next month. For now, I'm just going to stack up all the wood that we've got, load it into the trailer. The carpenter is really struggling to keep up with our supply. So I am going to definitely need to look at somewhere else to sell this stuff, which means I'm going to have to buy a property. The sogum is ready to be harvested, so we'll get that out. We also need to weed and roll these fields now so that they don't keep growing. A lot to do, actually. So I ended up putting a worker on the harvester so that I could bring the crop in and that set me free to weed both the fields. So that's what I did. And after I weeded them, I went to grab a roller because I found that rolling was going to be the next thing that I needed to do. The problem with rolling is 
I don't actually know when you're supposed to do it. I don't know whether you're supposed to do it before your plant or after your plant. So I just thought we'll give it a go and see what happens. And as you can see, it wasn't doing anything. So this current moment in time is not the time that we do the rolling. We have to leave that for another time. And as you can see, it wasn't doing anything. So this current moment in time is not the time that we do the rolling. We have to leave that for another time. And I also went off into my woods with a cunning plan of cutting down some trees, chucking them in the back of the trailer, and then just selling the trees as logs to the locals. Hopefully, somebody's going to buy it. I'm going to make a little bit of money. Well, it's not the greatest weather, but I'm going to have to plant, and we're going to do all wheat in the hope that it actually gives us a lot more chicken food. But we'll run all this in, get all this tidied up, and yeah, it puts us on the front foot again. Hey, there we go. So we do see a colour change. So uh, it's telling me that we are looking good with the roller. Yeah, so it still says we've got weeds coming. So the roller's working. Nice. That is just exactly what we wanted to see. Right, I'll just get all these fields done, I guess, and hope for the best. Farmer's job is never done. What I did want to do, though, while I remember, what I did want to do was sell some sheep. If you look here, these sheep, 30 of them. We can get 28 grand for 30 of them, which will mean that I will unlock enough money for the building that I want to do. Silver and market, this is what we're looking for. It's a massive thing, but it, it pretty much sells everything somewhere there. It's probably the cheapest bet that we've got. And hopefully this thing can just, just sell everything now. It's a big old building. So we just spent nearly 60,000 on it. But what does that mean for us in terms of this 40,000's worth of planks? Oh, and it is selling. There we go. That's gonna sell a lot more. Oh, wow. Hey, look at that. So, the long story short there is that building was a good investment. Even though things are a little bit janky. Pretty much nearly paid back what we spent on it already. I think this might be a little bit of a cheat code, this building. So we are looking good right now. We are rolling the fields, hopefully getting a higher yield. We're also continually planting the wheat. I've gone for three fields of wheat this time. Hopefully that'll give us enough feed for the chickens. I don't have to stress and buy some more. Thankfully, because of our awesome thinking, we've got our own little coppice or our own little bit of a woods going on. It's keeping that sawmill fed with all the wood. And thanks to this awesome new building that will literally take everything that we make, we are on the way up. We are doing good. I'm happy with progress so far. So we have had a couple of good little months and money has been kind to us. So I'm trying to get this tailor shop. Now, in order to get this tailor shop where I wanted to get it, because I kind of want to keep everything nice and bunched up, which might come and bite me in the butt a little bit later on. I've had to sell our two little windmills and I want to try and get the tailor shop in here. Now, fingers crossed. Oh, yeah, I can easily get a telehandler down here. So the sheep can get filled with food and whatever else they need. I can offload the fabric here, and then I can go around to the front. Boom. At the minute, I have leased this trailer, and I've just loaded this up with all the pallets that are excess and the furniture that this carpenter's was making. I'm just going to sell it. Reason being, I just don't need it. So we're going to sell it. We're only going to get 25,000 back. It's got a little bit darker trying to get back. I might have somehow tipped it over randomly, but now we're here. Hopefully we can sell all of this stuff without any real problems. We could call it a nice 20,000. It's not too bad at all, really. Got rid of one greenhouse. I am going to get rid of the other greenhouse as well. Just want to have a look at this next field that's just a bit further down from us here, this one. Because this is only 114,000 and we have 116,000. So I think I'll get it. Yes, it's got nothing in it. It's ready to go. So we can buy this and that'll give us something to do, something to work with. Hop into the telehandler and let's go empty the sawmill because he looks nice and full. These prefab walls sell pretty well usually and the wooden beams also sell pretty good. The sawmills can start pumping out stuff like No Tomorrow and it sells really well. I mean that one prefab wall might as well be 5,000. Last two things I've got to sell from the sawmill. So if we sell these... That brings our total to 52,963. When I started to unload this place, I had about 2,500. That is a ridiculous amount of profit from one building. I will look to turn this field into more trees. Probably sell this barn and squeeze in another sawmill right here. So we have been a little bit busy. We've been lucky with money. Money has helped us out a bit. I have planted this, not even field of trees. We've just kind of gone around the edge. 
the middle is still a little bit empty but we were making good money so what i have focused on is the wool production we have doubled up on our wool production we still only got the one spinnery and we still only got the one tailor's shop next port of call is potentially going to be another sawmill just because the prefab buildings are awesome I'm able to do these trees just with the chainsaw and i've leased a winch and it's it's going quite well actually in all fairness it's going very well i'm just going to do this for a bit until we get enough money to get another sawmill and then we will just hit that and hit it hard e there we go so this is what is inside it's not a lot it's just a little field i think we'll try and get some more trees planted if we can get any in here it'll be good this way it lets the ones on the outside grow so we can harvest them and it means these ones on the inside will grow at a slower pace i just wanted to show you guys that these sawmills coupled with that building equals really good money i'm not gonna lie to you it's been really good money but we've had a few little upgrades and I might as well drive to those upgrades and show you. But on the way through, ooh, a second sawmill. So, so these sawmills only need 10 of these trees to keep them completely and utterly fully working for a long, long time. This shed over here, we've got somewhere to keep all of our stuff rather than having it scattered around everywhere. But we've also got some new gear as well. We've got a new tractor, this bad boy. 313 horses is strong enough to do whatever we need it to do. Next one was the lawn mowers. I needed to be a little bit more productive when it came to cutting grass i only had that one front mower and it meant i had to do million passes well now we've doubled up we've got the front and the rear and it swath drops so it gives us a nice easy line to run the forage wagon down things have been going well we do still have the chickens they're doing all right you know it's not too bad now i'm selling the chickens every so many months so they're reproducing and i'm selling them when they're at 25 pound each but yeah this has been really really good had i not bought all of this stuff I think I'll be knocking on the door of a million real easily right now. But because I've been a little bit spendy happy, we've never had a million yet. Never had a million in the bank yet. But it's very easy. I feel it. it's very, very easy to get there now. Especially when we're selling clothes and all these wooden products. Honestly, look at that. Two packs of clothes, nearly 20 grand so beautiful so so beautiful that is probably our best seller obviously in terms of money if you get the right month anyway their high price is just over 10 grand so to sell it just under that it's not too bad at all these sawmills are insane i'm not gonna lie they are so insane in terms of their productivity and everything sells i haven't worried about trying to get the hype when it comes to selling all this stuff from the sawmill because it's just able to keep going that was always keeping me fed it's always working wonders. Most used vehicle on the farm has to be the telehandler, without a doubt. It's just doing everything right now, mainly because it has to. So when you think where we were at the end of the last video, when we just got ourselves established, now we're in a much better position. We are not needing contracts to keep us going. We're able to get our own money and make our own money really well. So much so that we've been able to upgrade machinery and give ourselves a little bit of space. Another sheep pen with a load of sheep in it. Things are looking good. Things are looking good. And things are going so well, in fact, I even treated myself to a new place to live. We got rid of the old wooden trailer and we upgraded it a little bit more to the static caravan. It's a little bit more spacious, a little bit warmer in the winter months. Treats as well. Just want to say thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope to see you again next time. I've just got a 10x all this and soon we'll become a billionaire. Take it easy. Bye for now. Bye, everybody.